Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at this shirt here. You see that? Jesus is Lord. Can, I, can you see what it says on the back? Am I high enough or low enough? You see yep. Trust, trust Jesus. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. Amen. Let's start off with that. Trust Jesus. Praise Jesus. Okay. Redeemer. I mean, provider. after all, that's if we were to synthesize it down, uh, the the fewest words possible. Uh, my conclusion is the two. two best words is just trust Jesus. If I, if I only had two words, mm -hmm. I made a video about that. Well, how would you, and the reason I did is because um, in street preaching, we not only used, uh, not only used uh, audio amplification systems, but we also used signs, uh, banners. And I had a 12 foot tall banner and I did, the banner was not for the, necessarily for the people who are, you know, right, walking right past me. They're for the people who are driving by maybe, 20, 30 yards away, you can't put a lot of words on there. The, the print would be so small, they can't read it from a distance. So I had to figure out how can I make bold print that people could see from a distance. And that means I had to reduce it down to the fewest words possible. And when I first did my banner, I put my word, two words were Jesus saves. Uh, eventually, though, I switched over to trust Jesus. I like that. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll get started with the Bible study uh, in a moment, but first let me uh, ask uh, the, the brothers here with me tonight, I'm expecting Sister Renee anytime, but uh, let's do some introductions here. Uh, uh, we got Ultimate Mordecai, uh, Brother Michael. Uh, take a moment and tell the people who you are in case someone hasn't met you yet. Okay, if nobody's met me yet, um, I'll try to keep it short. My name's Michael LeRae. I was a 30 years indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness set free by his grace, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so now I believe that there's not only Jehovah's Witnesses, but many others that call themselves believers that are veiled to his grace. And I'm trying to help the Lord with this lifting of the veil, sharing what the Lord shared with me about his wonderful, amazing gospel of grace. Amen. 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 Yeah, uh, what you're, by the way, uh, there was a text from Renee in the chat room. She says, on my way. So she'll be joining us uh, very, very, very soon. Right. But you know, maybe people will either get tired of me saying it or not understand why I keep saying it. But, you know, I, I consider you and Renee like, um, um, oh, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. You're Two Renee. sides of the same coin. Yeah, yeah, but the, but there's not like two different, not 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 two opposing ideas. Two no. two people they express the same idea. You're really your your theme, your mission, your ministry is so much alike. What what you both are focusing on, and that is clarifying the simplicity of the gospel. And as we, Renee says, she said she likes to untwist the twisted verses. So Sunday, I invented a new nickname for Sister Renee. Uh, a lot of people were who don't like her were always called her Jezebel, mm. and that's of course that's a, try, they're trying to insult her. But I came up with a new nickname, and now she well shall be known as the Untwisted Sister. <laughs> Untwisted. <laughs> Untwisted. <laughs> we're not going to take it. Sister, like that group from the uh, '80s, they were Rat. one of my favorites Rat back Tristan in the day. Sister. Yeah. yeah, we're okay. not going to okay. take it anymore. So our yeah, right. sister will be with us in a moment, but uh, until then, uh, Brother Cripps, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Cripps, and I'm part of a channel called True Story Live, which comes on Sundays at 9 p.m., and we stand in the gap between belief and unbelief, and we try to get people to come to the table, whatever they believe, and uh, talk in a respectful manner and um, get some of these subjects talked about. It leans more toward... Um, uh, everyday life stuff, but with the uh, gospel and living the Christian life um, as uh, uh, first and foremost as important. So um, I'm on this channel, uh, on Brother Luke's channel, Sin City Preacher on Wednesdays, obviously for this Bible study, and also on Talking Doctrine on Mondays for a show called Monday's Milk, which is the milk of the word. 
and also uh, occasionally on Steve's show on Saturday, which is uh, Vessels of Warfare, uh, which is about spiritual warfare and things. And then whenever anyone wants me to be part of uh, any discussion, then I, if I can make it, I try to say yes. And so um, it's a pleasure to be here. And I just saw Renee pop in, so I'll hop off. But hello to the chat. Good to see you guys. All right. Okay. We have with us, I've been telling everybody about your new nickname. You are the Untwisted Sister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> untwisted Sister. I love okay, it. The other night when I said, uh, Matthias goes, oh, I don't remember which band that was. I said, it's the one that said, you know, I want to rock. And he said, I want the rock. And no, we're like, not. Oh, we're not going to take it. We're we're not going to so, take it. Is their most. Right, we're not going to take it. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry for being a couple minutes late. You guys know I leave church, and I always have to. I'll always do a video to remind the viewers to come join us. So uh, a lot of times they'll you know they'll get here like five minutes after. So I wanted to make sure I did that before I I joined you guys. It's happy to see you here again with us. I told them that. I, I'm hoping that you'll be the newest member of the panel yeah. here on Wednesdays. Yeah. And we have a nice rounded thing where we all have our different gifts and yeah. different ways of looking at things. So it's good Love to see it. you, brother. Thank you. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, Chad. Hey, Saints. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you didn't uh, take a moment to introduce yourself, Renee, but uh, why don't you just take a quick moment to – there might be somebody who doesn't know who you are. Yet. Oh, okay. I, th I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> It was uh, <laughs> Renee Roland, R O L E and D channel of the same name. Uh, we contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints, free graced, unashamed, no works uh, added. Um, yes. Just add the blood. Sure. And uh, I like to untwist the twisted scriptures that work salvation is used to either tell you that salvation is somehow based on something you're doing, whether it's to get it, maintain it, or prove you have it, yes. uh, which none of which are biblical. Nope. So I think I'm in the same boat with these gentlemen, and we are often attacked for it, and I'm in good company here. Amen. Thanks, you guys. Okay, then. Very good. Uh, all right. Um, let me start off by saying that... Um, these Wednesday night Bible studies. Now we've been doing them for, I'm, I don't remember how long exactly, maybe five or six months. The first uh, few studies we did were uh, focusing on the most famous sermons. And uh, so I hope you go back and watch those. We, uh, we critiqued the sermon by uh, uh, Spurgeon, uh, Warrant of Faith, and we gave it an A plus, one of the best sermons ever given. Uh, and then we critiqued uh, Jonathan Edwards' sermon, uh, Sinners in the hand, Hands of an Angry God, and we gave that an F minus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope you watch that and see why we are so hard on that sermon. And we also gave an F minus minus to the, uh, um, the sermon by Paul Washer. Uh, he's, he proudly calls it the sermon that made everybody angry at him. And he even says in the beginning, he, he intends to make everybody angry. Uh, and much of his sermon is based upon uh, misapplying uh, uh, First John. Uh, so go watch those. But after that, we got started working our way, as is our goal now, to work our way through the Pauline epistles. And Romans is the first one. And I, I hope you'll watch the first couple of episodes on the Roman study because it's so important to lay a foundation for uh, this study. And then uh, more important than any chapter in the book, in my opinion, is Romans 9, only because it's been stolen, hijacked by Calvinists to, to prop up their damnable heresy. And uh, so you, you, I really hope you'll watch the study on Romans 9 so that you cannot be deceived by the, the Calvinist false interpretation of this, that chapter. Now we're on our on beginning chapter 12, and uh, I did post here in the private chat space, Brother Cripps, uh, the first 15 verses in the KJV and also in the Amplified. And uh, Renee, uh, I posted before you joined us, so if you need me to post anything, post anything again, let me know. Uh, well, I, pull, I just pulled it up. Yeah, okay then. All right, let's begin. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Oh, well, there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's the verse that we 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 want to always bring to everybody's attention, really for our defense and Paul for Paul's defense of all the false accusations that Paul and we are preaching a license to sin, and he's clarifying that no, it, 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 this this freedom we have is not a license to sin, but it's it, but he does ask us now that you do have this security in Christ that, uh, hey, you, you, there is a reasonable expo expectation from God that now you will help, help in his cause. And it's an honor and privilege that we get an opportunity to do it. I'm sorry, I don't usually go first, but uh, let me, Brother uh, uh, Michael, why don't I ask you to go first this time? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, th these are things, you, you, the whole chapter is of 12 is, is showing us, you know, how to present ourselves. And you are a living, walking sacrifice. He says, I, my Bible says that he urges us by the mercies of God. And that urging, it's, it, it's a word that also means exhort or I encourage you. It's parakaleo. Parakaleo, it's an exhortation. It's an encouragement. It's, it's not a commandment. Do you understand? But it's, it's a different way of thinking. I encourage you. You know, this is out of love. By the mer mercies, present your body living and holy. Why? Because you are alive and you've been made holy. So present yourself as you are, right? And it is a sacrifice. What did Paul say? That sometimes you got to even pummel your flesh, right? You're, you're a living, walking sacrifice. Acceptable, acceptable to God. This word acceptable means well-pleasing. It's you arrestos your arrestos it means be well pleasing to god anything that's done out of love that comes from within of course it's well pleasing and yes. and this service of ours if you're if, if 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 you are serving god you know you do it from within not because it's a commandment but because it comes from within from your heart amen, amen. amen. Mm -hmm. okay let's um uh, renee I usually have ladies go first, but I thought I'd change it up. No problem. Um, yeah, yeah I, I often use this verse. I know uh, Jason does uh, to let people know that th this is our heart. Uh, our, the security we have in Christ, I, I, I tried to say, you know, if, if salvation could be lost, then there'd be no point in getting saved and all of us could just hope, hope, hope that we get a chance right before we die so that all our sins are covered and we don't do anything to mess up and lose it because it's clear you can't get it back as per Hebrews. Once lost, always lost. You know, they, they just, they can't get it. So um, this is why we do it. Paul reminds us often who God says we are in Christ. So, this is him reminding them the mercies of God. What God has done for you, it is the least you can do to live holy and acceptable. And we're also told, which we've already covered, uh, you know, it proves what, what God's will is for his children. And it's for a testimony to others. Amen. It, the, our whole point as a church for remaining here instead of being taken up to heaven is to serve our dad and to preach the gospel to others. And if you're not a living sacrifice and you look like the rest of the world, what do they see that they would want? What what could they uh, what do you have that they would want to attain to? Right. You're not trustworthy. You're not a trustworthy um, apostle or a uh, preacher or uh, even disciple because of how you're living, it really can speak very, very loudly. No. And I had some one person say, uh, I heard a long time ago, I'm sorry, I got a hair on my tongue. That's not what they said. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what they said. They did not come to me and say I had a hair on my tongue. Um, they said, um, you know, some people will never 
get to see Jesus. You may be the only chance they get of seeing Christ. So there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you should put your name there. It should be the gospel of Renee. You reporting what he's done for you and exhibiting Christ's love through yourself. It should be giving a, a great testimony to others. And I think that Paul is just reminding us that because of God's mercy, we should be doing this as a re because he said by the mercies of God. And I don't think that means just be able to be a sacrifice through the power of his mercy, but that we are reminded of his mercies that all he asks of us is a very reasonable thing. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brother Cripps. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Renee and my answer. Um, she rightly said that I use this, this verse, but uh, not just the verse, but the phrase at the end, reasonable service in explaining how works do not buy anything for salvation. And it's not a license to sin. But what we do uh, in reference to this verse is reasonable service, that it's all what Christ did and nothing uh, that we do, that our works don't enter into it. Our works are as filthy rags. They do not enter into salvation at all. It is Jesus plus nothing. That's it. Um, so when I ran across Renee's channel before we ever met and I, I would started listening to her videos, I heard her say this so many times over and over and over and over again. And I, I started dwelling on that and, and uh, studying the verse in, in this whole chapter, actually. Um, I like to read things in context. Uh, uh, so uh, I don't cherry pick. I don't fall into a situation where I'm cherry picking scripture to try to promote some, some kind of uh, thought or doctrine, but that I understand the verses in the context of the chapter. Um, and, and so in looking at this, as, as we're doing in the study, we're, we're doing that in essence. And well, not in essence, we're actually doing that. But in hearing Renee talk about this reasonable service, it clarified some things for me. Um, I, I wasn't basing my life on works. I did understand that was all, G, uh, all what Jesus did. But in understanding this reasonable service part and making that uh, part of what I say and anything that I'm involved with, um, it's changed everything. And if people would understand that, that it's not a license, uh, the, the grace that we preach isn't a license to sin, absolutely not. He, uh, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies, this is the point, by the mercies of God, this is because of what he did for us. It's not, it, it, it's not as if it does anything for us. It's not. Not only is it not for us, it's for other people. And because of the mercy that he gave us, the incredible gift that he gave us, it should be a wellspring inside us that we bubbling over that we want to do this because it's a reasonable service because of what he did for us. It's not for uh, anything. It doesn't bias anything. It's simply the way our attitude should be this way when we realize the greatness of what he's done for us. Thanks. Awesome. Amen. Woo hoo. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. All right. Yeah. That's, you know, it says our reasonable service, but I, we could say, isn't it our reasonable expectation? I mean, or, don't you think it's the least you could do? Now, we all are very, very careful to make sure that no one gets the impression that you have to do some kind of religious works after you get saved in order to uh, keep your salvation or prove your salvation. No, we, we, we will argue against that always, but uh, we always want you to know that, it, come on, if you do understand the greatness of the gift, isn't it the least you could do is want to, not only want to do everything you can to please God and serve God, but it's such a privilege that we're offered. Mm. Uh, I mean, we take for granted. Watch my, my series, 50 Hours in Heaven. I'm, I'm so, the happiest time of my recent life was doing the series about heaven. Because that 
it, it makes me so happy to think about eternity and what's waiting for me. And, and oh, it, it, it's such a joyful thing to think about. And, and we, we take all this stuff for granted and uh, we get get caught up in, in all the, the, the problems of each day and forget to recognize the greatness of this gift of eternal life. Yes. I mean, our, after all, we were on our way to a second death. Destruction of both body and soul, perishing forever. And then instead, we are going to live forever with ecstatic, blissful joy in a new heaven, a new earth. And the thought of it is so exciting. And knowing that God has given that to us because of what Jesus did and our faith in him and his promises. And don't you think the least you could do? It, that, that Wouldn't your reaction be when someone gives you such a wonderful thing? Like, wow, what in the world? How can in the world can I pay them back? Not out of duty, not out of, not out of your, your responsible to, to, to do it in order to keep your salvation, but out of just, well, maybe gratitude. Aren't you grateful for this? And when you know that you, you have the ability to give this gift to other people, uh, you should say, wow, what a privilege I have to be able to tell people about Jesus and the free gift. Yes. So, um, yeah, it's the least we could do. It is there are reasonable expectation that we would be so excited about Jesus and our salvation that we would want to help this cause, the cause of Christ, uh, in, in any way we can. And it's not a labor. It's a, it's a joyful thing to serve the Lord. No, it, it starts off in, in verse 1, by the, by the mercies of God. It's his mercy that does it. Mercy is the Greek word oiktermos, which means favor or grace, even compassion. When you feed on his grace, his compassion, his favor that you didn't earn it, this is something that's just going to come from within you. It's going to come out of you through your spirit. Amen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I say Brother Hendricks's uh, comment and question, and he, he wrote, what is, mo what is motivating us to present our bodies as living sacrifices? What is your motivation? That's what I was trying to, trying to uh, talk about. Uh, the, it should be a natural response. Like, I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. When I recognize his great love for me, that he would die for me, I couldn't help but love him in return. I have this great gift of eternal life and salvation freely given by Jesus. I can't help but want to serve him and, and help his cause. Yeah. 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 That's the motivation. Amen. You know, I got a I got a friend that when you were talking, a buddy of mine texted me. His name's Tony. So hello, Tony. He says he's watching live. And the interesting thing about this word service, service, it's a Greek word, latria, latria. It means worshiping in him or song, H-I-Y-M-N, right? H-Y-M-N, H-Y-M-N, mm, 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 like a song. You know, sometimes it, we think of service, like God wants us out there digging ditches. No, it's, it's Tony, no. he's what is a worship leader he travels and he sings you know and that is an awesome service to god just singing and leading people in worship right song mm -hmm. it's not always like sweat and blood and, and, and doing all these laborious things i love it yeah it's that it's you're, you're actually resting mm -hmm. you're resting in him and he's working through you mm -mm. i love it well be, before we go on to the next verse one other thing i want uh point that I think is important to understand is that we, we, we try to make this point over and over again. All of us, we're all in the same uh, mission. I talked about how Michael and Renee, their, their ministry is so parallel to what they're doing, but we're all really focusing on this gospel. The, who is Jesus? How do I get saved? That's our primary focus, even though we like talking about every subject in the Bible. But the problem that we have and, and the reason we have to spend half of our time or more untwisting these twisted verses mm -hmm. is because people are not able to make a distinction between salvation and service. 
some verses are talking about salvation. Yeah, we need to understand what it's talking about. But then if it's talking about service or ministry or discipleship, uh, you know, we call everybody has a different word to, ex to express this point. But that's what this is, our reasonable service. So um, you need to really, uh, really work at, at making that distinction. Uh, a lot of people like the verse, uh, rightly divide the word of God. I, some people that use it as a banner and slogan, unfortunately, they over divide the word of God. Now they Paul only us. But yes, we need to divide it and separate it and make a distinction between this diverse talk about service or salvation. That'll, that'll, that'll solve a lot of the confusion right there. Oh, it sure would. Good point, Brother Luke. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read verse 1 in the Amplified and see if there's anything in there before we go on that uh, would be helpful. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Mm, mm, mm. Now, I do see a potential problem how someone can twist this. Renee, have you ever had to untwist this verse? Because I can see how a person could take this and it says, set uh, as a uh, holy, well-pleasing, let me go to the KJV instead here. Uh, uh, your body's a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Now, Renee, has anybody ever used that and thrown that in your face and see? You got to present yeah. Acceptable to God, but it but it's always because uh, they're trying. They're they're. I always say they put the uh, emphasis on the wrong syllable. Uh -huh. they're, they're they're not uh, looking at the they're not focusing on the right thing. Uh, that because of God's mercy, because we are saved, we should be. See the big difference between should and must. There is. What must I do to be saved? Believe. Believe on Christ for your salvation. What should you do because of that? You should present your body as a living sacrifice. But they do twist that. But they twist everything. Anything that instructs a person to do something, they will always say that is part of what gets you saved. Yeah. You have to be a chip. There's so many people that have Jesus as their Lord, but not Savior. There's so many people trying to emulate him through the willpower of their own flesh Oof. that have not trusted him for salvation yet. Mm -hmm. If they had, then they would be able to show grace to others because yes. those who give them much love much. Amen. Yeah. So that, that's why they do that. And it, they do do it. I know they do it. I know you've seen it, Luke. Boom. Well, I've never heard anybody reverse that the way you just did. The, the <laughs> normal thing is people to accuse us. And matter of fact, uh, 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 Renatha, Renatha sent me an email today. I'll bring it up more on Sunday to talk about complaining about Charles Stanley. He wrote he wrote something, and uh, it, we'll we'll talk in more detail about it on Sunday. But uh, the idea of um, you want Jesus to be your savior, but you're not willing to let him be your Lord. He won't be your savior unless you. he's also your Lord. And they don't mean Lord in, as in uh, God. They mean Lord as in master. You've got to turn your will completely over to Jesus, yeah. surrender your life over to Jesus and your, all your will. And, uh, and, and But Renee, you said it exactly right. These mm -hmm. people are actually doing what they're accusing us of. They're leaving out part of it. We're saying, yeah, Jesus is my Savior, and he's also my Lord, my God. Mm -hmm. That's how I say Lord. But also, I want him to be in charge of my life, but I'm not making my salvation contingent upon how well I'm obeying him. Like well, that's just Lord. their way of adding works without calling them works. Yeah. I mean, submitting your life, submitting to the Lordship, all that means is obey the commandments. They just don't want to say that because it's, it's blatant works. Is the subtlety that beguiled Eve. And I, I said on one video title a long time ago, I believe Satan's greatest trick is to get people to live the Christian life, moral reform, with never being born again. Never, because they never trusted. The, the, entire, the entirety of the gospel is, where is the good news message in the gospel? That Christ died for our sins. 
God mm. spoke message of the gospel and they was buried and rose again. Now his resurrection confirms that his blood was acceptable to God on our behalf. Mm. So if my sin debt is wiped out, the wages of sin is death. That's what I owed. And then he paid that wage for me. That's the good news. And that's the exact news that everyone that's in work salvation denies he accomplished. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Lord's right. heretics want to um, only focus on the Lordship of Jesus because in the way that they uh, explain Lordship is you follow and serve. And uh, that way they can boast on their performance and try to claim some of the glory for themselves. Right. Okay? But what uh, they're failing to do is recognize that that is not part of salvation, that Jesus being our savior is the key. Uh, some people don't learn, ever learn or develop this lordship where they're really letting the Holy Spirit direct their life and transform them. They resist it their whole lives. Everybody does that to varying degrees, but what everybody must do, there's no exceptions. You better have Jesus as savior, relying completely on him. 100%. Relying as on you him. said, Luke, they think Lord means master as in over your life. But it's clearly when he says that he's talking about his deity. You know, like you say, he's talking about him as the Lord, mm -hmm. the Lord God. And uh, the, the thing is, you he, he is not your Lord. There's people calling him Lord in Matthew 7, and he never knew him. Lord, he Lord. never knew him because they didn't do the will of the Father, which was to simply believe on him. And so he, you can pretend he's your Lord. It says in scripture, nobody can call Jesus Lord, except it be by the Holy Ghost. The mm -hmm. Holy Ghost, once he's in you, he is your Lord. He is your God. But until the Holy Spirit is in you, uh, you can't call him Lord. He's not your Lord yet. And, you know, it's yeah. sad. I interrupted Michael. I'm sorry. No, you didn't. I thought you were about to say something. I got no. carried away in my zeal. <laughs> Not at all. Okay. Any more, Michael, before we go to the next verse? Well, I mean, it's simple. I mean, if, if it was our works, then I'd say be a Jehovah's Witness. They don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, but they're full of all these good works. And sure. I was one of them for 30 years. Sure. You know, you, you want a good works religion and you, you want your works to lead to salvation, be one of them. Right. Yeah. Um, well, I want to brother i've i've this may shock you and the whole audience but i am truly a jehovah's witness <laughs> i'm a real jehovah's witness well i'm a witness for jesus christ as jehovah god almighty i'm not one of those apostate jehovah witnesses that you used to be part of yeah yeah crips yeah, you were saying something yeah, I was just going to say, I wanted to add one thing before we go to the next verse. And when Renee was talking I was, uh, and uh, talking about the way that a, a lordship person uh, treats all this stuff and they get uh, attacking and critical on other, other believers, that's actually a tell. Uh, they have a tell where you can see that they're not resting. Uh, and it's unavoidable when they start doing that you can tell right away so a, a tell is uh, uh, a term mainly used in poker where you can tell what kind of hand someone has and that's exactly the way I mean it when they start um, they're attacking you can see that that hatred and that um, spite toward people that aren't doing things the way they think they should uh, be doing them and certainly not in the way that they interpret the Bible to uh, uh, to to act and um, l uh, live their life, so uh, they have a tell to show that they're not resting. That's the only thing I wanted to add. So that was great, great stuff. Yeah. Okay, all right. Verse two in the KJV says, "And be not conformed to this world." I have a shirt. I almost wore it tonight. It says, uh, uh, "Heavy drinker," and then on the back of it is this verse here. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm. Uh, let's let Renee go first on this one. Go ahead and let Jason real quick. All right, Jason. 
you don't yeah, no, I don't mind at all. Nope. And this is something I use a lot too. The the phrase renewing of your mind, transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is how the Holy Spirit works in a believer's life. And this is to me, it's a daily thing. Every day that we live and breathe on this in this realm, uh, the Holy Spirit is sanctifying us. And we've talked about sanctification before. It's a three-step process. There's a there's sanctification coming when your spirit is is quickened from a dead spirit to a live spirit, where you have the whole the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, and then you're sanctified in this way by the renewing of your mind daily, and then you're sanctified for good uh, at the end when we receive our eternal body and we're ripped away from this flesh that we carry around, and we're no we're no longer have any dealings with it whatsoever, and you're completely sanctified in that in that way. So it, this is how this transformation process changes us from the dead person that we were into the person that we will become. And this should, this is also the, the process that produces fruit, that the Holy Spirit produces fruit in, the, in us in this way by the transforming, the renewing of our mind from the way that we used to think to the way that we will think and the way that we're thinking now. Um, and this is this is the verse that we use to, to talk about this. Uh, and it, it is the proof. It's the word proof. The, the, they, they use proof here in the King James. But it is the proof of what is good and acceptable and perfect and is the will of God that is played out in the believer's life. And this is the evidence which is shown by our love. It all trickles down into that love that we show, that, that the way that we can look and really see the tell of a believer in someone that's truly resting should be their love that is, that is, um, that is shown. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Brother Michael. Good word. And you know me, I, it's just, I still say the foundation of grace. That's what's going to transform and renew your mind. Don't be conformed. The, the word conformed is, it means to fashion or mold as if by clay. It's pronounced suske matizo, suske matizo. So don't be molded as if by clay to the, wor the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. This transformed is metamorphoroo. Mm. It's, um, do you remember the Incredible Hulk? Mm -hmm. Remember when he would transform? So it means to be changed. Mm -hmm. It's a change that happens. You, It's a metamorphosis that happens. And I still say it's all because of this foundation of grace. Amen. You receive it, right? And that's how you prove. Prove is dokimatsu. Do dokimatsu. It means to be approved by testing, right? By grace, God transforms you into pure gold now gold goes through a process right mm -hmm. it's called refinement yeah you, you heat it up and all these impurities rise to the surface you know yes. this is stuff that we have that's why paul's he's he, he's exhorting us right he's encouraging us because we still have this stuff in us when you're tested by fire impurities rise to the surface mm -hmm. but what does god do he wipes those away. Scoops. You're still, you're still gold, aren't you? Yeah. You take that gold bar, you drop it in mud, and you pull it out. It might look like a big chunk of mud, mm -hmm. but then you wash it. You know, you wash it off. The watering of God's word, going into God's word, reminding yourself who you are in Christ. Look at that. You're still gold. Yeah. You're just covered by mud, but you're still gold, right? Even mm -hmm. though on the outside it doesn't look like it. A lot of people look at me. I just look like a thug, <laughs> right? <laughs> but inwardly in my spirit god has made me like that pure gold amen hey michael they're um, they're saying that your audio is lo lower than the rest of us i tried adjusting it here in my control room i turned it up but maybe you could do something about just getting a little bit closer or something that probably would help my my audio let's see yeah that um, was good. when you guys when you said my, my audio. volume all the way up i don't know if my volume makes a difference I, I input you can go to the input volume for your camera so yeah. it might 
I don't know exactly where it is on your tablet, but there is an input volume for your camera. So I've maybe got it on my, I just got it on my cell phone. I can hear you good now. I can yeah, hear me. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I just need to get further, like closer. Yeah, that's great. I'll just get a little bit closer. That's all. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I get, there's a control room I have. Uh, when you when you host a program, you can control certain things. So I, I raised the setting for your audio too. Okay. But uh, I think it's just a matter of getting a little closer for you. Um, all right, um, Renee. What about uh, that verse? Uh, verse we're on verse two, aren't we? Yeah. Right. Both, both Jason and Michael really focused in on what was great there. It's the renewing of your mind. How do we manifest by proving what is our father's will? Mm -hmm. A child should act the way a parent has raised them to. Mm -hmm. Well, we've just been born. Some of us, you, mm -hmm. when you're born, you have to have milk to grow. Mm -hmm. And then you see progress as you grow up. So renewing of our minds is, is required because we have to remind ourselves who God says he has made us. Amen. And although we don't have the, we don't fake the attributes and then we become that, we are that. And so we should be manifesting it. So right. instead of doing what the works people say by doing this righteousness and acting this way and giving up your habits in order to be righteous, God says you are righteous. Amen. You oh. are holy. Just yes. like the instruments in the temple, they were sanctified, but they weren't active in their uh, sanctification. They weren't, they didn't do anything to be holy. God set them apart for himself by yes. himself. Yeah. And he does the same thing for us. We are holy. We are righteous. And because he's our father, yeah. we have to acknowledge it through. It's all a mind game. I'm telling you, that's where the battle is. Amen. That's what, when Satan comes in and says, yeah, you have God really said, are you sure there's nothing? I mean, don't you have to keep the commandments to be saved? I mean, is it just, is, is you sure it's all your sins? It's just your past sins when you, until you accept them. And now, now you're back under law to do the rest and keep it. You mm. know, he's always going to, that's why I tell people you, you've got to get so secure in, in the genuine no. That you can spot this stuff because it will shake your faith. And and that's we have to put on the helmet of salvation and renew our minds daily, as Michael said, in being reminded of our identity. Jason, you the the, the phrase you pointed out, renewing of your mind. It's yeah. who God says we are, mm -hmm. and we can prove that perfect will of God to others to others so that they can see because we're Christians, Christ followers, we should be exhibiting Christ like mm -hmm. behavior. Right. Amen. Thanks for that. I am. Uh, I'm surprised after listening to all three of you on this verse that there's anything left to be said, but I am going to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to emphasize something a little bit different here. And let me, let me, uh, I'm going to show it to you in both verse one and two. Uh, I'm reading it in the Amplified, though. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters. That's from verse one. In verse two says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed. Uh, I'll read the rest of it. It's, the rest of it is really great that how they've written it. But the point I want to say is, look, it, these verses are not telling us that uh, now that you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will automatically do these things. The, we're, we're being urged to do it because it doesn't just happen. Uh, people, some people think that, uh, well, there hasn't been any change or enough change in that person, so they're not really saved. Well, it doesn't always happen like that. You know, when I've said this before, but I'm, I'll keep repeating because I think this makes the point perfectly. If you were born today, 10 people were born today from their mother's womb and you examine their lives over 70 years, you're going to see some people excel right at a young age. Yeah. Some people succeed later in life. Some yeah. people just fail and fail and fail. They can't ever get it right. But they're all equally human beings. 
Yeah. If 10, if 10 people are all born again today spiritually, and for the next 70 years we look at their lives, you're going to see the same kind of a thing. There's not some perfect, perfect, uh, uh, identical, uniform growth in everybody. We're unique. Right. So, see, this is something that's up to us to cooperate and allow the Holy Spirit and cooperate because the Bible says that we can grieve the Spirit. We can resist the spirit, grieve the spirit, and eventually even quench the spirit. Enough, you, if you grieve it enough and resist it and refuse to listen to the Holy Spirit as the God's trying to transform you, change your desires about life, uh, if you're resisting it, eventually, it's kind of like, have you ever had a person that was, maybe in marriage people can relate to this sometimes, people say something over and over again, after a while, you just kind of tune them out. You don't hear them anymore. You've tuned right. them out. And so you've tuned out the Holy Spirit. You can't even recognize the spirits trying to transform you because you've resisted so long. So this is telling us that don't expect that there is happens in everybody automatically. And if it doesn't happen, this spiritual growth, that they, they're not saved. No, just realize that everybody has a choice of how much, how well they're going to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, how much they'll embrace the promptings of the Spirit and, and, and uh, want to grow. So I'll, I'll read this in the Amplified because I like how it's, phrases the growth part says and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves that the will of god is that it, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you I think that stated it perfectly. Yeah. All right. Before we go on any more on this verse. Yeah. Well, the key to the verse is the transformation comes by the renewing of your mind. It doesn't say the renewing of your spirit because your spirit is perfect. Ooh. Our spirit is perfect. In fact, I believe that your soul has a mind and I believe your spirit has a mind because the scripture says we have the mind of Christ. Mm. We're the mind of Christ. It's, it's in our spirit. We're trying to get the mind of our soul, right, to be transformed. The mind of our spirit is perfect. If we could tune into the mind of our spirit, then our transforming of the soul, and that is by knowing who we are in Christ. In fact, the new, the word renewing, ana, anakenosis, anakenosis, it means to make fresh. Because mm. some of our thinking is stale. Yeah. How do you make it fresh? You keep on feeding on this gospel of grace. You keep on knowing who you are in Christ. So many people, they think that, that there's a race and you in a literal race our 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 start is the starting line but now by receiving what christ has done for us the finished work of christ our starting line is the finished line do you understand yeah we start at the it is finished line when you know that it is finished and he has made you perfect in your spirit and it's all been done by grace and you're not trying to work for this salvation you're working out your salvation what's already in you this is the transforming of your mind the renewing of your mind when your mind is renewed then your body's gonna follow right your footsteps then you're gonna be acting out these things that he's encouraging us to do with our bodies present your bodies yes Amen. Yeah, but it happens in the mind first first the spirit and then the transforming of our mind yeah that, that's where sin comes first too it starts it starts in the mind and then it can right. become a physical thing that's when right you... sin consciousness we yep. should be righteousness conscious all the time and amen we're a slave amen. to righteousness amen amen even when you sin you still confess, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Why? Because the Bible says so. That's it. Second Corinthians 5.21. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. I, uh, of course, we've, we've talked many times about First John uh, 1, 9 and 10, about confessing and all that. And uh, I, I really don't think that we have to confess our sins all the time in order to restore fellowship with God. I argue against that position at all. Uh, God will never leave us or forsake us, even though we're not focusing on him and we're not in fellowship with him. He's still with us all the time. But uh, So that's not what it's talking about. I believe that verse is talking about the unbeliever. If you confess uh, your sin, he's faithful and just. To forgive us our sins and cleanse us all in righteousness that's talking about how salvation works 
But yeah. Uh, yeah, so your idea of confessing our righteousness. Confess your you want to confess something? Confess your righteousness. Yes. That, 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 that's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, any more on this, Renee? Any more to say on this before we go to verse three? I just wanted to say it is. I get a lot of this. I, I, uh, I'm, I get a lot of gentlemen, sometimes women, but most time gentlemen, who have an issue with their porn addiction. Uh -huh. And I have instructed them, and people have said this is blasphemous, but I do not believe it is. I said it's really hard. To sit down and watch porn, watch women and men abuse themselves. Uh -huh. Forget they're human beings. When you make a statement out loud, I am holy. I am righteous. I am Christ-like. I'm a child of the living God. That's not who I am. Right. It's a lot harder to do it. Amen. Now, the condemnation is what's killing them because they're going, oh, I'm such a bad person and God hates me. I don't lose my salvation. I'm not saved. That does nothing but strengthen the sin because now you see yourself as a filthy sinner instead of a redeemed, righteous saint. Yep. Amen. Great it blocks word. the connection. So if yep. they want true victory, it won't come through condemnation. Nope. It'll come from God's grace. Amen. Amen. Remember, renewing the mind means to make fresh. Yeah. You don't want to make make old <laughs> and, no. and, and speak death over yourself. Oh, I'm right. a sinner. I'm so scum. I'm terrible. No, you keep on confessing who you are in Christ. Awesome, Renee. Love it. Thanks. Even in the middle of it. Even in the middle of it. Yeah. During that sin. I think the a related a verse would be when Paul tells us to uh, whatever is good, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, think on these things. This is how we are renewing our mind by keeping our mind on what's righteous and good instead of yeah. allowing our mind. I mean, I, you know, they say uh, that it's impossible for your mind to have two thoughts at the same time. So all you got to do to get rid of the pornography or any any other bad thoughts that you're having is replace it with. You know, uh, just start talking to Jesus and, and, and think about what's good and pure and lovely. I mean, yeah. what, what's better than thinking about Jesus? That's why <laughs> I, 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 there's nothing I'd rather do than talk about Jesus in the Bible. And if other people love him and want to talk about him, uh, that's who I want to be with. Yeah. All right. Amen. Verse three. Uh, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. All right, Renee, you, do you want to go first this time? She's so busy in the chat room, we can't break her. <laughs> I, was, I was answering a, a question about... Yeah, but she, yeah, she does that. She has to... You want us to go to? Yeah, uh, I got it. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Hold on. I'm, I got to fix my camera. Let me fix it. Right okay. Now. So, <clears throat> for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, which means of a sound mind. Doesn't okay. mean not drunk. It means That's of right. a sound mind, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Um, for one, uh, your faith is not some attribute you have that you can boast in. Uh, God gives it to uh, all these, all the people in the body, he gives it to all men, period. Um, and when it says not to think of themselves more highly than he ought to think, what, hey, Luke, wasn't the Nicolaitans, wasn't that the thing where they would lift themselves up over everybody else? Like yeah, a government. That was, a, that was a, the establishment of a clergy over the laity. Yeah, okay. Dividing so, the, dividing the church into two classes, and, and uh, you know, that was the problem. Yeah. And, and, that, and that could be a result of something like this because uh, knowledge puffeth up, right? Yeah. You know, so um, I, I think he's just saying to that all of us should be humble uh, as Christ bowed down and washed the feet of his disciples. Uh, we certainly shouldn't think of ourselves uh, anymore. We should keep ourselves 
humble as servants and not above another or better than a num another within the body since we work as a unit and you know god has gifts and so forth for all men but uh i could see uh this being an issue because i think a lot of problems start with people thinking that they're uh elevated more yeah. than others and paul is saying through the grace given unto me so um again the key so far to every single verse is to be reminded of god's grace every single verse amen by amen. In his grace mm -hmm. even on this issue yeah wow amen yeah i mean he starts that out in verse three doesn't he for through the grace mm -hmm. given to me See, grace gives nobody boasting or bragging rights. Right. Because God gave me, as a free gift, his grace. I have nothing to boast about within myself except for him. I just did a video on this, I think, yesterday or day before about having bragging rights. Do any of us have bragging rights? Yeah. Not in the gospel of grace. If you're under works, if you're trying to boast in your works, then you're going to have bragging rights. But under grace, he says, don't think more Highly, do you know how Hooper Parisio means super abounding when it comes to his grace? It's Hooper Parisio, Hooper meaning hyper or super. Mm -hmm. This thinking more highly of yourself is Hooper Froneo, Hooper Froneo. It means overly proud or lacking humility. See, grace keeps you so humble, it does opposite of make oneself proud mm -hmm. that's the thing that i think that people that can't stand the gospel of grace it's because they want something to boast about they want something to be proud about they want to go and say lord lord didn't i and serve the lord a big platter of their good works right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amen no amen uh our brother crips uh yeah so uh paul um, I don't remember where it is, but he, in one of his books, uh, he talked about if there's anyone that would be able to brag, it would be him. Yeah. And he listed all the reasons why he could brag over all the other apostles. Even if someone was going to brag, it would be him. But here in this chapter, he's making it very, very clear for I say through the grace given unto me. <laughs> To every man that is among you, not to think highly, uh, more highly of himself than he ought. Um, and and I've struggled with this in in my youth, not not so much after uh, uh, God allowed me to go through uh, quite a few different things to make me humble and to um, teach me humility. Um, pride is a killer. Yeah. It is an absolute killer. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't want us to fall prey to that. Paul doesn't, and God doesn't want us to fall prey to that. So this is important to understand. And if we truly rest in Christ's finished work and we understand that it's not at all involved with anything that we do, then what do we have to brag about? All we have to do is brag about what Christ did. That's it. Amen, dude. Amen. We, we have nothing in ourselves to brag about. And Paul's making that point very clear here to me. Um, and yeah, we, we should all take this really, really seriously. Um, because there is, there is something that comes out of being humble that pride can never touch. It's the, it's the compassion and love that we have toward other people, especially when we're bragging in the righteousness of Jesus and not bragging in anything. That Amen, comes bro. Amen. It makes it, you have more compassion for other Amen. people because Amen. you know how much compassion he has over you. You yep. can't give to others what you don't already have. If you haven't received the compassion, not because God doesn't have compassion for you, but if you have rejected it, not received it, mm -hmm. right? Then you cannot give it to others because you don't have it within. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I know of two times that Paul uses the word boast. Yeah. Uh, and in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, uh, and he said, lest any man should boast. And uh, he, I think it's great. He, 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 he said, where, where is boasting then? 
it is excluded. Uh, so Paul really wants everybody to understand that there's no room for any boasting and thinking about, you know, you know this, and then he elaborates here, the word boast is not there, but the same point is being made. Don't think so much of yourself. This, that's why I use the term Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Say it again. Christian. Oh, Christian. Yeah. I, I've been calling myself Christian and referring to the true faith as Christianity rather than yeah. Christianity. It accomplishes yeah. two things. One is that people say, well, what, what do you mean Christian? What's that? You mean Christian? I say, no, Christian. Because Christian, Christian means it's all about Christ, not about me. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, but they uh, that we got to make sure we keep in mind it's only about who he is and what he's done and his promise to us and, and that and he gets all the glory uh, rather than us trying to steal the glory. I have I made a video years ago uh, called the challenge. I got so fed up with people saying faith is not enough. You got to also have a changed life. So I said, okay, I get I'm, I'm issuing a challenge to everybody who believes faith is not enough. You got to have a changed life also. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, a couple of questions for you. One, did you actually quit sinning completely? Well, no, 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 I don't mean that. I don't mean, well, yeah, but the Bible says you've got to be 100% sinless. Mm -hmm. If you're going to, if you're going to be justified by your, with your self-righteousness, it has to be perfect. This, you can't be 90% good or 99% good. It's got to be 100%. So did you completely stop sinning? Uh, absolutely 100%? Before or after you got saved? Well, I don't know. And I said, okay, what, what about your good works? Let me tell you, let me ask you something. I want you to give me an, a rundown of a typical day for you. You wake up and everything you do all day before you go to, to bed, I want to know about all the good works you're doing every day. Okay, run them all for me, will you? Oh, well, 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 well. They, they don't have any works. Mm. They're, they're the ones that are saying you got to have all these works. And That's what makes me laugh. They, they, there work. is none. All they, they do is judge others. There's no yeah. good work. It's just if they are able to come up with one or two works, like well, I I do I get my Bible out and I pray and I say okay, you got you mentioned a couple of things. You know what you're doing now? You're boasting. Yeah. You're, what you're doing is you're boasting in your works. Your pride shown. As far as I'm concerned, your works are not impressing me at all. I'm, I'm, I'm sure God's not impressed with the measly works you're talking about. I yeah. work a hundred times more than you work, and I'm not bragging about it. But you're, I was expecting, since you're saying works are so important, that you're going to have quite a resume. You have no You know, who, uh, you you know who some of the holiest, holiest living people on the planet are? Buddhist monks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Buddhist monks are the, some <laughs> yeah. of the holiest set apart people from the world yeah they even deny food most of their, their vows of celibacy silence they all their days meditating and praying you know but wait a minute luke how much change outwardly is necessary god starts from in here mm -hmm. all that outward behavior is a result of something inside and sometimes you can't see what he's working on in here. They're so like focused on somebody smoking a cigarette that yeah. they can't see what what they have accomplished. They don't give anybody. Peter says to grow from this to this to this to this, and that's a that's a spiritual maturity issue, not a salvation issue. But yeah. I want to know how much change. And then Luke, when they compare themselves with how much they change, what if they find somebody way better than them? Does that mean they're not saved now because they didn't live up to that guy's standard? Well, let me read that in the Amplified before we go to the next verse. Uh, it says, For by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment. As God has apportioned to each a degree of faith and a purpose designed for service. Yeah, we have a purpose. Amen. I've, I keep on, I made this point, and I'm surprised that so many people have not recognized this. But the day you're born again, you become two things a child of God and a servant of God. You have a minute, minute servant means minister. Yes, you have sir. a ministry, it begins the day you're born again. 
And, mm-hmm. and now from that time, point to your last breath, uh, God's keeping score. You're building up treasures in heaven or you're going to have uh, be disappointed at the judgment seat of Christ of how much time was wasted. Mm-hmm. So uh, you have a ministry. That's your service. And as we've said, it's a privilege and an honor and a joy to be able to serve God. Uh, but that's the, that's the whole purpose of this. Mm-hmm. You know, once we get this mm-hmm. eternal life, what are you going to do? We live in forever. I mean, what? what? Right. Come mm-hmm. on. What's the point of living forever? Well, we, we're not just until we yeah. die in the resurrection, but also into eternity. Don't you think there's a greater purpose than just <laughs> amusing ourselves or something? No, it's to serve God. I don't know what great. Uh, uh, designs God has for my all through eternity, but mm. I'm excited about it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Uh, verse four, unless more needs to be said on that, verse three, let me know. I do have one comment. Well, yeah. Oh, go ahead. You're going you gonna to go ahead? No, you, no, go, you go ahead, sir. You yeah. <laughs> no, you go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Michael, all please. Right. All right, Jason, you're such a gentleman. Oh, thank you. my, middle, my middle name's Jason, by the way. Oh, awesome. Michael Jason. Nice. Yeah. So, this is awesome because some people boast even about, I have more faith than you do. But this says another thing that God has given us by grace is he has allotted to each a measure of faith. Allotted is merizo. It means he distributed. He distributes just like when Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. What did he do? He marizo. He distributed to his disciples a measure of food to give out to others. Nice. The disciples couldn't boast about, hey, look it, I came up with this plate of food for you, right? Because that food that Jesus gave to them, they're the ones that fed the 5,000 plus, right? Yeah. Jesus gave it to his disciples. It was allotted or given a measure of by Jesus. That's our faith. He gives to us, and what we do with that, it's because he graced us with the faith to be able to do it, right? Amen. You understand? Yeah. Yep. Brother Cripps, you said you had more to say? Yeah, just really quickly, uh, Renee was that saying that they, uh, Lord Shippers asked, the, uh, or she was asking the question, how much change does a person need to go through? And the answer to that is they have to be perfect. <laughs> it, it, it's it's not a little bit of change. It's not like, oh, you're almost there. It's perfection. Yeah. If if Amen. they're not uh, resting in what Christ did, they're relying on their own filthy rags righteousness, which I'm sorry, but I don't care how good the person thinks they are, they do not reach perfection. Without Christ, it does not happen. That was my Amen. that was my answer for Amen. that one. Okay. Great work. All right. On to verse uh, four. Uh, the KJV says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So, Boom. We, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. So four and five go together. Whew. Brother Cripps, you're ready to go first on this one right now. I am ready to go. I wish more people understood this. When they look at other believers and they say, well, you know, I do this and and you you don't have this. You don't have this gift. I have this gift. And uh, and they they list all these things that they do, kind of what you were talking about, uh, uh, Brother Luke. Um, so they, they're, they're boasting in their office. That's what they're doing. The, the office that they think that they that, that they reside in um, but but they don't and he states it very clear um, for we have many members in one body we're all members and he's the the description has been we're all serve different purposes all members have not the same office we're not all in the same place also brother Luke was talking earlier about the uniqueness that each person has a unique relationship their uh their life um they they grow at different levels they they grow at different speeds um someone that's saved might have more understanding because of the the way that they were brought up and they, they they've been around it and they have a little bit more understanding than someone that's never heard the gospel at all so when they get saved they 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 step right into something that they already have some knowledge working in them they already have some se- some seeds coming up and so uh, the Holy Spirit harvests those things. Sometimes for some people, it might appear to be overnight, but it's not. It's actually that the seeds have been planted a long time ago, 
and the Holy Spirit is harvesting those things. So it looks like it's overnight, but a lot of times those those seeds have been planted for a long time. But they're all they're different offices, different gifts. Well, this next verse and six the talk, uh, will make this point even more clear. But as far as offices are are concerned. Um, each of the, di the different members of the body serve different purposes. You can't look at someone else and look at your own gifts and talents and abilities and look at someone else that is not as fluent or is not as studied in the word. They haven't memorized as much scripture as you and say to them, oh, well, you're not, you're not a believer. You're not at the same level. You don't have the same quote unquote office that I hold. And if you're doing that anyway, then I would check to make sure that you're even of the body to begin with because your pride is showing. That's the tell. Their pride is showing. And when you start criticizing other people uh, for uh, things that the, you know, the, the speck they have in their eye, beware of the own plank that is in your own eye. Yeah, so. Amen. You keep, on, you keep on mentioning the word tell uh, as in poker, a poker tell. Uh, I suspect uh, we should not try to play poker with you, Brother Cripps. <laughs> no. Okay, Brother Michael, what do no. you say about verse 4 and 5? Uh, th this, this is a great verse for Jehovah's Witnesses, honestly, to understand the triunity of God as one God, but three persons with three unique different offices, right? Like Jesus saying that the Father is greater than I, he, he's not saying by nature, he's talking about an office, you know, the Father being greater. And when you see the, the one body, yet the different members, you know, that, that reminds me of the one true God, you know, it, but you've got the different members. Like, um, like it, I, I made a video a while back, it actually is my video that probably has more views than all other ones. It, it's it, it's uh, called... If Jesus was God, then who was he praying to? Oh, yeah. Right? And I, and I remember when I was a Jehovah's Witness, um, I, you know, people tried to explain the Trinity because we don't believe in Jesus being God at all. And we didn't believe that the Holy Spirit is actually a person with personality, right? That's what person means, someone with personality. So God is a person, right? Um, we believe that the Holy Spirit was just like a force that God used. But anyhow, I remember... I was um, I, 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 I told you guys before that I, I used to do this guy, uh, David Jeremiah's hair. Right. And um, he was a customer of mine. I didn't even know who he was. I was Jehovah's Witness. I thought he was actually a literal doctor. People say Dr. Jeremiah. And I thought he was a doctor. So he invites me to come to his church. You know, after I had left Jehovah's Witnesses, I received Christ. But I still wasn't under. Somebody asked me, you know, do you have to believe that Jesus is God to be saved? I didn't understand how Jesus was God yet. I just trusted in Jesus for my salvation. So um, I was not getting it. Everybody tried to explain the triune God in a different way, an egg, the egg shell, the yolk, the, the uh, white, you know, but one egg. And I was like, oh, I didn't get it. But when I was sitting in church that day, I went to David Jeremiah's church. He, he was talking about, I, I think he had this guy that visited me. I think it was Tim LaHaye that wrote a Left Behind series or something, you know, about the rapture and all that. Yeah, it was. And I think they were talking about that stuff, but I suddenly went to a different place in my mind. God, what, I, I stopped paying attention to them, and God spoke to me. Let me share with you the triune nature of God, and it was so powerful to me. He said that God, God means government, right? Your belly is your God, meaning your, your belly governs your life. If money's your God... It's because it governs your life. Your problem can be your God. If your problem governs your life, you, you put it above God, right? So God, you can make that word God meaning government. It's one who governs over you, okay? In a government, you can have a president, you can have vice president, you can have a secretary. All three by nature are equals. They're all equal, but each one has a different position. The president has the greatest position. The vice president listens to the president, does what the president says. The secretary does both what the president and the vice president. Do you see Father, Son, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit there? Do you see how their functions aren't, oh, I'm better than you. I, I, I'm higher up than they work in perfect mm -hmm. harmony. And that's how us as the body, you know, if we could only be like that more, that perfect unity, we're all equals. We're all part of the one body, just like Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the one God, the one government, yeah. right? 
three persons in that by nature equal. That's how we are. We function and we have different types of gifts. We have different types of offices, mm -hmm. yet one body still. I, I think it's just an amazing revelation. Yeah. In this scripture, you wouldn't see the triune God there because it does say Jesus is God. But you can see the triune God in these verses, can you not? Yeah. Okay, hey, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. I also wanted yeah. to say something that was revealed to me a few years ago when I was reading scripture. It's why I defend for the triune Godhead uh, in three persons yet united, one in you, same eternal beings, same all one together. Um, because that is a way that God can give and receive love within himself. Uh -huh. It's another Oh wow. It's the only way self, oh, so the self existing God <laughs> can love and return love within wow. his own self. Amazing. Is that so amazing? Beautiful. Beautiful. Amen. Yeah. yeah. The uh the amen, the um the plurality or the triunity in this case of, of God, the Godhead uh is uh proven by love because the Bible says God is love. And God is eternal, so eternally there had to be love, and love cannot exist without an object. So there had to be at least two parties for this love to exist. Mm. So there's three. I love that. I love it. Uh, I uh, the um, verses four and five. Uh, a lot of interesting points have been made there. Uh, I want to. This is talking about the different uh, offices. Now it's true. As, as we go on, Paul is going to talk about how we have uh, different gifts and different offices and uh, different roles to play within this body or this church. Uh, but if you did not see Talk and Doctrine on Monday night, uh, Brother Cripps hosted it, and uh, I was invited as a guest to talk about how to witness to friends and family. Mm -hmm. If you did not see that, I hope everybody will watch that. I believe that's one of the most important discussions we've ever had. Mm -hmm. But uh, in that discussion, I was making the point, look, uh, it is true that we have different roles to play, but that doesn't give anybody any excuse to neglect on evangelism. No. Evangelism is a universal obligation that goes to every believer. We are all obligated to share the gospel, you know, no matter if it's not our gift. Some people are gifted as evangelists. Mm -hmm. If you're not gifted in evangelism, does that mean you're off the hook? You don't have to share the gospel? No, you're still obligated. You still should be uh, sharing the gospel uh, every opportunity you can. And the, of course, the other question is, why wouldn't you? Don't you care about particularly your fans and friend, friends and family? <laughs> so here we have... A well, that takes the word obligation and puts it into it's a pleasure. Instead of thinking of it obligated, like it's a duty, it's a pleasure, yeah. right? It's due, but it's a, a pleasure of mine. You know, it's not something that I force myself. I just can't help but do yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. But I think all is true. I think it can be a duty and an obligation, a pleasure and a privilege all at the same time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, but this, of course, in verse four and five, let me read it in the Amplified, uh, see if there's anything interesting in there. For just as in one physical body, we have many parts, and these parts do not all have the same function or special use, so we, who are many, are nevertheless just one body in Christ, and individually we are parts one of another, mutually dependent on each other. That's well said. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we did, did Renee talk about this one or not? I don't remember. Renee, did you talk about verse 4 and 5? No, I did not. Please go ahead. Okay, no problem. Uh, the the prior verse, let me go back up to 3-2. Uh, I think that was the motivation for Paul saying, don't think yourself more highly. Right. Because he is saying, this person will have a different gift, or this person will have this. And the reason for that is not because he's better and God loves him more, or he's better at something. It's because God has, we have one body. And many different uh, gifts and offices need to be filled. Yeah. And they're all of equal importance. Hmm. Without one, without a foot, the body doesn't function properly. Right. So uh, they're, they're all, so 
being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. And since we are all in one body, we can't envy what we are <laughs> because we're in that body and our brother that's in that body is us as well. Yes. Because we're all in Christ. Mm. So I can't envy what mm. position he has because he's in the same body as me and he is me in a sense. Mm -hmm. So um, I, uh, I, I like to take these figurative things like the body of Christ and try to do physical drawings to, to get people to understand the unity. I've even drawn a giant figure of a body on a cross and put little happy faces in it and go see when he died, once you trusted in him, when he died, you were on the cross with him. That's what it means by you died with Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should yeah. walk in newness of life. So to have one body, um, we are like Jason and Luke and Michael. I would, I, I can't be jealous, although I am jealous. <laughs> of guys, uh, because we are all in the same body. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel that, um, although we're members of the, of the same body that you are me and I am you in that sense, because the same God that dwells within me dwells within all of you yeah. and we're all connected that way. So I think it's important Amen. to remember, uh, that we are all one and that's not new age gooey kumbaya. That is that's scriptural. Yeah. No, absolutely. Amen. Thanks, Ray. Okay. Uh, we all have the same spirit. We all have the same spirit. It's the spirit of the Lord joined to ours, which joins all of us together. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to ask you, uh, particularly Re Renee and uh, uh, Cripps, uh, we're approaching the... Uh, Magic hour, 11 p.m. in the East Coast. I, I, we like to stop them at 11, so it's not keeping you up too late. Uh, if you want to do another verse or so, we, I will. But if it's get, getting that time, we'll we'll start to sum this up. What what do you we say? Can, I can do another one. Jim's yeah. off school this week. Okay. All right, then. Let's go to the next verse here. Um, verse 6 in the KJV says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. Mm -hmm. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop there. It, it, they, that, had all, that had to all be read together there, six, seven, and eight. Uh, yes, so, sir. Renee, why don't you go first? Yes, um, it's clear. It's clear to me here that he is reminding them that all the gifts come from God. Uh, that they're all necessary, as I was saying uh, earlier, but also to have joy when we perform them and to be satisfied with whatever the gift is that God has given us and to perform it with joy. He seems to be instructing that. Um, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He, so whatever God gives you to do, do it to the utmost, do it with joy, do it with uh, all you got. Um, and, Again, uh, it seems to imply to not envy another's gift. Amen. Right. Right. Hey, Brother Michael. Yeah, I just I love I love the Greek words and all of this. Because our gifts, it's the Greek word charisma, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you ever hear of a charismatic, it's somebody that believes that in grace gifts. Mm -hmm. It's not gifts that you earned. Charisma is a grace gift. Charis, it comes from which is grace. Mm -hmm. These gifts that differ, differ is diaphoros. Yeah. It means varying. There's a variety of different gifts, right? Um, but then again, they are grace gifts. None of us earned it. That's why none of us can boast. There you go. And then he says, 
it's a proportion according to the proportion of your faith. You know, do you actually believe mm-hmm. in these gifts? Uh, now, I don't know where you guys stand. I haven't spoken to, to you individually, but I remember back in 2012, I, I received Christ in 2002. Mm-hmm. In 2012, that's when my life really radically started changing you know i started feeding on the gospel of grace and as i was feeding on the gospel of grace just all this renewing of mind started happening right this renewing of mind fresh new thoughts daily mm-hmm. every moment actually and there were things that i can't explain that happened you know touching somebody and nobody t- telling me this is how you're supposed to there, there's a format behind praying for somebody I'll just pray for people and see radical deliverance happen. I mean, even even physical healings, right? Um, for instance, and this isn't to boast of me because this is a grace gift. God graced me with the gift to pray for this man that was working out at the gym I was in. And he said that his wife, I hadn't seen him for a while. And he said that his wife was in the hospital and she had been there for like three weeks, I think he said. Um He said she had a severe, I think she had a severe stroke and he was afraid she was going to die because now she was in a coma. And he says they're, they're feeding her. She's plugged into feeding tubes and all this stuff. And his name was Bob. I remember Bob. Bob was like that loud mouth bully guy in the gym, but God told me, you know, love him. So I did. (laughs) So I see Bob. Hey man, I haven't seen you here for a while. Where where you been? He says, ah, you know, they have this Boston accent. Boston. And he says, not good. I'm not good, Mike. You know, he's telling me about his wife. She's been in the hospital and and um, and he says uh, she's had a stroke and, and she's been in a coma and he's afraid she's going to die and she hasn't eaten or anything like that. And I said, bro, do you mind if I pray with you? And it kind of took him off guard. He says, uh, OK. And I said, all right, you do your workout. I'll do my workout. And when we're done, I'll, I'll come find you before I leave. and We'll pray together. OK. And he says, all right, because I honestly I, I didn't know what to pray. I'm like, oh, Lord, why'd that come out of my mouth? Pray for this guy. Remember, it's 2012. I'm still, like, trying to figure out this stuff. So now what God had given me in 2012 was um, nobody – I'd never been anywhere where I heard anybody um, praying in the Spirit before. Never. Never. Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in that. I never had been to Christian churches that had done that. Nobody showed it to me or taught it to me. But um, – God gave me that gift. I prayed, if this is real, I want it. And I received it. And it came pouring out of my mouth like a flood. It, you know, and, and there's different forms of tongues, too, I think, that in public. But there's the kind that Paul said that edify oneself when you pray in the Spirit. So I went off and I prayed in the Spirit while I'm working out in the gym. I'm kind of singing in the Spirit. I'm doing it very quietly. I'm not showboating or nothing like that, you know, because that was a gift, too. And afterward, I find Bob. After I'm done working out and uh, we go to have our prayer, I said, you ready to have a prayer? He says, okay. And I said, don't go nowhere. Don't bow your head. Nothing. The gym was full of people. I just said, do you mind if I put my hand on your shoulder? Okay. So I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, Bob, I said, I said, Lord, heal Bob's wife a hundred percent right here, right now. I said, Bob, do you receive it? And he says, yes. And I said, then it, let it be done to you in Jesus name. Amen. I walk off. And he's like, well, thank you, Mike. Thank you. I'm like, yeah. Now I walk out of gym because I'm really upset at myself. Because I'm like, that was the stupidest. I can't believe I just said that. Heal his wife 100% right here, right now. Do you receive it? Yes. Then say amen and it's yours. Amen. And I leave and I'm just like, I get in my car and I'm really upset at myself. Mm -hmm. I'm so mad. I'm like, that was the stupidest thing ever. I can't believe I prayed that. And then what I got, I sensed within was, hey, you said that you wanted me to pray. You wanted me to pray through your mouth, right? Because I was telling the Lord, pray, pray through my mouth, Lord. Pray. I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. And that came out of my mouth unexpectedly. Well, that was on a Saturday. Sunday, I get a phone call from one of the guys that worked at the gym. He called me on my cell phone. And, I'm like, and his name was Jonathan. I'm like, hey, Jonathan, what's up? And Jonathan says, Mike. He says, you know, Bob that works out here at the gym? I said, Yeah. And he says, he came in looking for you. And I'm like, oh, (laughs) okay. And he says, he came in here to say thank you because he left from the gym and went to the hospital and his wife was awake from the coma 
and she was eating food and laughing and her and the nurses were having a good time together. And <sighs> dude, I, 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 three weeks in a coma and my eyes instantly started watering mm -hmm. because I was blown away by it. And I remember just how upset I was at myself for praying that, but then this man got instant <clears throat> manifestation of that prayer and there wasn't anything special. Anything. It was just, it, and that's, that's something that ever since God did that for me, I believe in his charisma. Of course. His grace, these grace gifts, even, even the ability to pray. I didn't even know what to pray, mm -hmm. but that came out of my mouth. Yeah. I mean. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it didn't give me anything to boast about. I was actually mad at myself, but God told me to trust him. Right. And then the next day I get that phone call. It just blew me away. Blew me sure. away. Wow. Yeah. 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 Nice well, I've been uh, kind of advertising the uh, a program I want to do as soon as possible. And I'm inviting every person who has a story like that of a miraculous God working a miracle in their life uh, to say, I want to join the program and, and testify of this miracle. I've I would got, love to hear that. I'd I've love got, that. I got a bunch of miracles yeah. I've shared on other videos and I'll share them that day. Yes. Will you come on with this one and any others you have? And Renee has. I some. have others too. I yeah. don't know if Crips has any miracles, but anybody listening, oh, yeah, I do. That you can share. We're going to have a miracle sharing a night. And uh, but I, what I want everybody to do is send me an email or a comment saying you want to join that panel that night to to share the miracle or more miracles uh, with with everybody. And I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, we did six, seven, and eight. And I forgot who went. Renee, I think, went first. You went next. Crips? Yep. Six, seven, and eight. Perfect. Perfect. So um, it's hard to follow what uh, God did through Michael. And it was what God did, not what Michael did. And he, he, he knows that. Um, it's something that God does in us. And this is a perfect way to talk about these three verses. Now, I've not had an experience where I've reached out and touched someone and they were instantly and someone else was instantly healed. That hasn't happened to me. Um, what I have had happen is through through my words, through things that I say, I'll, I'll have uh, someone come to me later and said, when I was listening to something you said, and it felt like something broke off in my spirit and I was released of something. Um, and that's totally the Holy Spirit. So I, I use the gifts God's given me and he shows me uh, what they are. And, I, and I, that's the only way I know how to show my reasonable service towards him in doing that. And I don't um, uh, puff myself up. And Michael did a really good job of, of separating himself from what it was that the, the, the gift was. The gift is of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And each one of us, this proportion of faith, and I liked how Michael said that this is not something you earn. It's so important to understand that because I have wounds that come uh, from the gifts uh, because of the way people presented them to me in, in trying to teach me how to earn the gift of speaking in tongues or uh, fake it till you make it. <laughs> you know, uh, just, just say words, just just say mumbo jumbo that comes out of your mouth. Yeah. Um, and that's not Michael's experience. And I've met other people that that's not their experience either. But I, I grew up in, in that. And so for a long time, I resisted uh, that. And it's still not something that God has, has given me personally. But has there been um, uh, transformation in my life and, and miracles in my life and things that I've seen him do in me. Absolutely. There has. So, um, I have other gifts that he's given me. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I use them to the best of the ability that he gives me based on my faith. And I, I do pray for more faith constantly. I'm, I'm praying that he, he gives me more and more faith and also for wisdom because he promises to liberally give that. Amen. Uh, and so that's that's what I try to do. But these three yeah. verses, um, Paul's making the same point that we referred to earlier, that we all have these different gifts and they are given to us by his grace. Not anything that we earn or we work for or we fake it till we make it. None of that is true. No. Um, these are gifts from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, the last part of verse 8, uh, I love how he says here, 
um, uh, about all these things. Uh, simplicity, if he ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. The cheerfulness, all these gifts should be given with cheerfulness. And again, not celebrating what we are or that we earn something or it's because of how great we are. It's because of how great he is. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, six, seven, and eight. I'm going to read it in the amplified before I comment. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them accordingly. If someone has the gift of prophecy, let him speak a new message from God to his people in proportion to the faith possessed. If serviced in the act of serving or he who teaches in the act of teaching or he who encourages in the act of encouragement, he who gives with generosity, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy in caring for others with cheerfulness. Um, you know, I keep on talking about how much I like this amplified in terms of putting it in simple language and, and, and amplifying the thought or the way we're amplifying the thought verbally. Uh, it's very helpful. We just need to be careful that you know, when we're reading these other translations that we, uh, we guard against seeing the works, repent of your sins inserted into some of it sometimes. But uh, that, that was beautifully stated. But I want to emphasize this. Of all these gifts that are listed there, I think Paul talked me talk about this later, if I remember correctly. But I want to make the point that um, um, I, I think I'm called into evangelism. More so than I said, universally, everybody called to be an evangelist to tell everybody, but more so that was that's my primary mission and focus. But I, I'm also, I believe, a gifted to teach. So that's what I do. But does that mean that uh, if someone needs encouragement, I say, no, no, find the encourager. I'm not an encourager. <laughs> no, no, I need to try to do all the things and fill in wherever I can to help out, even though it may not be my special gift. But I want to say that of all the gifts, I think the, the, the gift that is a most meaningful to me and, and also that is, is most, um, let's say, um, unrecognized is the gift of encouragement. Um, the people who have taken the time to write a simple little word or uh, two to me, uh, encouraging me, yeah. I can't tell you how much that helps. Yeah. And, and uh, so we don't all, and they're also, we don't all have to be on the front line as far as, let's say, the in the prime uh, spotlight. Some people are going to be more in the spotlight, more up front. Some people working more behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Those that work done behind the scenes where you send someone a quiet little message of encouragement, that is the, one of the greatest gifts of Love the it. church. Love it. Um, yeah. Okay, I guess we've all talked about uh, six, seven, and eight. So rather than going on any further, let's, uh, let's uh, take some time to summarize our thoughts on the talk today. Renee? The uh, ladies first, uh, the untwisted sister. Untwisted, <laughs> untwisted talk tonight. We're not going to take it anymore, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I, I really like that it's getting into the unity. We, I, we need more of this to be reminded of the unity in the body. Um, it's a lot harder. Uh, to hurt someone when they are you, when when you're in one unit, you know, instead of seeing yourselves separate than. And um, I, I, I mean, there there's a lot. Our flesh wants to glory. Uh, we're and that and this is about that. It, it wants to glory in something. And we're told not to because it's all given as a gift and that whatever you do, just do it with all your might for God. Mm -hmm. uh, perform that which he has assigned to you with joy and don't envy what another person's uh, gift or position is. And that's important. But the beginning of this was really good to be reminded that we we, 
you know, the whole, that's a license to sin. But the strength of sin is the law. When has any of the law ever made somebody act right? Ever. <laughs> I mean, the more laws you put down, the more they break. There's no, it's not yeah. helpful. So uh, I, I have just asked people, I wish I could just, you know, like my son's aunt said, I wish they could just believe for a week, you know, taste it, see the Lord's good. See, just trust only in what he did. Have all the freedom in the world. You can do anything you want and you're still going to heaven. What do you do with it? Well, uh, our friend RL, you, you know him. He said, you know, your dad just tells you how much he loves you, blesses you, showers you with gifts. And then you go steal his Porsche you know, pee in the back seat, hit the with a sledgehammer. Is that your is that your first response to your dad telling you how much he loves you and showering you with gifts? Of course not. It's I want to let my dad know I love him too. So um, it's really cool here. It says by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. And there's not a lot of doing there. You know. Nice. There's, not, there's, there's a lot of being, being what he says you already are mm -hmm. and kind of walking that out. You know, it's, it's important. It's all grace. Everything's grace. Amen. If we're able to do that, it's God's grace. If he puts it in our hearts to do it, it's all God's grace. And so there, there's no boasting in any of it. I think that's a, a big message. It's all God's grace. Amen. Amen. Oh, can I remind everybody? to keep Manly Moses Shore in prayer. He has a PET scan this week. We want a miracle for his lymphoma because these are unbelieving Jews. Okay. And, and I've been praying that God use it to give him as a sign, not just to prolong this man's life, but as a sign um, that he's real. Mm -hmm. He's a real God. Mm -hmm. Amen. What's the man's name? Manly Moses Shore. Landly Moses Shore, Manly, Manly, Manly Moses Shore, yeah. Manly Moses Shore, Zechariah 4 7 says to shout in Hebrew, Hen Hen, which is grace, grace to your mountain, and that mountain will become a level place. Wow. So, we all together we shout, Grace, grace to your mountain, grace, to grace. that lymphoma, grace. this mountain, so that that lymphoma now will become a level place. And we believe it and we receive it for you in Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. All right. Um, okay, brother Cripps, sum up your thoughts. Well, sure. Thank you. Um, so, my thoughts. I love this particular uh, the, these passages. It's perfect, uh, perfect for us to focus on, and for especially for me to focus on. And I love the points that all of us have um, uh, made tonight. I love these Bible studies. I'll just want to say that first. Um, it's edifying to me and helps me celebrate the gifts that God's given you folks as part of the body and also what gifts he's given me. And they are corresponding gifts. They work together in, in a way that even though we might have um, uh, different beliefs and different backgrounds and different levels of growth and all that stuff, different offices, uh, that, they, <laughs> that the Holy Spirit works in everything that's being said. And it's like a symphony. It's like, a, it's not music, it's words, but it's a symphony that seems well-placed by the, by the Father in the way that he spreads everything out uh, so that we can understand these things to refute the people that don't know how to rest. They're not resting. Um, and I love the things Paul that's saying here. And, and, and it's not just simply... Um, you know, saying it's not works or it's not this or it's not that, but he's talking about that it's all about grace. It's simply the grace that God gives us, any gifts that we have, uh, and it tells us how we're supposed to uh, use them and the attitude we're supposed to have. We're not supposed to boast in all of this stuff. And as Renee said, uh, she loves how we're getting into the, the love and the things that are coming up. So um, be sure to to tune in next Wednesday for, for sure, because there's some things coming up that are important um, for believers to understand. And Paul really starts this out well. So I'm excited about what's to come. Uh, and and uh, thanks to the uh, chat room as well. They're always so gracious and um, 
listening and and involved. I just love you guys. Uh, you're a, a edification to me as well. So thanks. Amen. Yeah. Okay. All right, brother Michael. Would you uh, give a summary? Yeah. I, first, I just want to say I wish I could be part of the chat room. I I just don't have the ability. My cell phone's up there. On, uh, that's what I'm talking from, and I I can't look at the chat room. I wish I could be a part of it. But um, summary. Well, we started with 12.1, Romans 12.1, which says, by the mercies, by the mercies of God. Mm. And like I was saying earlier, you can't give out what you don't receive. And I love how that word mercy is oikthermos, oik oikthermos, which means grace. It's grace, compassion, and favor all built into one, oikthermos, mercy. You cannot give mercy to others without receiving. So first we started off by receiving mercy from God. And then tonight we ended it by showing mercy, right? It says shows mercy, showing mercy with cheerfulness. Mm. So you can't give. And this is the beauty of it. This word cheerfulness. Oh, this is so great. This, this, this is the, one of the things God gives me as a gift, the desire to study the Hebrew and the Greek language, right? It's just something I love to do because I can hardly understand English very well. So when I get a new language, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. So I, uh, I look into this and this cheerfulness, you know how in English we have the word hilarious? Mm -hmm. if, if, if something makes you laugh. Okay, if you go to a comedy show, there's people, I've been to comedy shows before where you force a laugh out. It's like a courtesy laugh. <laughs> Not very funny. Yeah. But when something's hilarious, you can't help. It comes from within and comes bursting out, right? So hard that you're crying because it was yeah. so funny. It's called hilarious. So this Greek word for cheerfulness is where we get the English word hilarious. In Greek, it's hilarotos. Hilarotos, right? And it means hilarious and it also means to be overflowed with grace Whew. now wow. to me that's just so powerful and this is a part of showing mercy with this hilariousness right so overflowing with grace because how do you show mercy to others and overflow with grace mm -hmm. by receiving his hooper parisio super abounding overflowing grace within us mm -hmm. and if you don't receive it you won't give it out to others, right? right? right. I love, I love the power of these words. Me too. Just, just, mm. uh, Michael, someone in the chat asked this, and I wanted, uh, I'm sure you can answer this. What kind of Bible do you use? Is it as a. I get it uh, all the time. Greek? I get it all the time. Uh, my, <laughs> so I've got, like, here's my Bible tonight with all of its notes. Wonderful. You see this? Now, this is that, that's not my only Bible. I got my other one, and it's not to brag. Oh, look at all the notes. No, 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 of course not. I, I don't have a Bible that has the Greek in it. Okay, uh, you know, I have to actually find the Greek word. I go online okay. instead of getting all these concordances and stuff. I just go online mm -hmm. and you can look up the Greek word, and then you can tap the, these Greek words. You can, you can go so deep. It mm -hmm. takes a little homework, but you, you find the root meaning of the words, too. And then you can go to the different concordances. I don't just use one. I use right. quite a few because they're online. I try to find the sum, the, the, the truest meaning, because so, Hebrew and Greek has so many different meanings to right. each word. So I try to sum it up. Okay, Holy Spirit, show me the Holy Spirit. This is, this is what's interesting. Mm -hmm. And this is something I don't understand, but this is a grace gift as well from the Lord. Okay. I look up a word. And before I find the meaning, the meaning's already in me. It's like the Holy Spirit tells me what it's going to mean. And then I speed read, brrr, and I find that meaning right okay. there. And I'm like, whoa, it just yeah. pops out. Yeah. And it, it, it's confirmed every time. Wow. You know, it doesn't come from my head knowledge or my own way. It's all a grace gift. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. Thanks. So I, if you want to know my translation, I'll, I'll say it again. I, I, I don't, I'm not a Bible translation pusher. Mm -hmm. um, years ago, um, the guy that helped me so much recommended, you know, coming out of the Jehovah's Witnesses religion, he, he recommended that was 17 years ago. He recommended a, a new American standard Bible. Right. So I, I said, okay, so I got that. And I know people have their Bible wars. And the reason I still have my new American standard is because the Lord's tell me 
don't go to war with others. Don't cave into them when they say you're, you should be a KJV only. I have no problem with K you know, that's why I go deep into Greek and Hebrew. Right. Exactly. I, I love the differences just like that amplified, you know, and if, if there is stuff that I find that my Bible doesn't correspond with the Greek, I'll find it in the NASB and I even say it on my, on my videos, but I've found a lot with the KJV too. You know, mm -hmm. the, the translations are fallible mm -hmm. because the translation comes from man. Right. The original word comes from the infallible one, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Just like when people say you should be KJV only, I just say, well, what, what scrolls did Jesus read from? Was he reading from KJV? <laughs> right? Right. Did Paul quote from the KJV or did the yeah. KJV not exist yet? So I'm not a KJV hater. Mm. I'm just not a promoter of any. I use whatever translation, but that's why I like to go into the Greek and Hebrew so deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they were trying to figure out how you used the Greek and you explained it, that you oh, look up the word and, and uh, on, online. And, and I, I'm, I'm actually still, I'm still learning. I'm yeah. Taking me so deep into a, a, a good rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> going there. I'm going there too. And show people how to just start in a simple way, how to start simply. Right? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I want I want to encourage you to do a tutorial video showing the methods that you use to uh, do this research. Uh, everybody, so everybody can learn and, and try to. I just uh, may do that. I yeah. just may do that. It's yeah, I put that on one of your videos, Michael. So when you see it, don't be surprised. I put it I'll in there. To, do, do a video. I'll have to, um, well, here's here's a. So here's. Can you guys see this? I got my. I just turned my iPad on. Yeah. Okay, so maybe someday I could do that. You got Romans 12, verse 8, yeah. if you can see that right there, mm -hmm. right? And it's this is called the interlinear. So you have the Greek words up here, yeah. and then you've got the meaning of, like, here's that word, cheerfulness. Can you see that right there? Yeah, I can see it right there. Cheerfulness. Yep. I, I think I'm pointing at it. So what I do is it says cheerfulness here. Here's the Greek word. So you see that? So yeah. I hit right here, bam. This little thing, and it, oh, I hit the wrong one. Hold on, because I can hardly see. Let me go back. Hold on. Be patient. Now it's not going back. Okay, cheerfulness. So above this Greek word cheerfulness, you see these numbers right here? Yeah. You see those numbers? Yep. Okay. So I hit these numbers. Boom. And up pops this word. See yeah. that? How it, yep. that comes from our English word hilarious. Yeah. And that's oh, the Greek right. word, right? Yep. And then, so you, you scroll through and you can find all the different meanings of this word. And, and there's so many different explanations through here, right. you know, just, it goes to the Strong's, it goes to yeah. other concordances, but then I travel a little deeper mm -hmm. than, than just on here too. Of course. You know, I, I'll go online and, go into the deeper meanings, find mm -hmm. out, the, you know, all, the, even the root meaning, you yeah. know, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. I love it. And this Thank app you. is called Bible Hub. It's a pretty, yeah, um, it's, it's pretty cool, you know. I, I know there's didn't... a blue letter, a blue letter Bible mm -hmm. app too that I think has an yeah. internet here on it as well. I'm not good at using that one. I haven't figured it out yet. So I yeah. just do the Bible Hub. I like Hub Bible Hub. Like, yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, I use Bible Gateway, uh, Bible Hub, Bible Gateway, Blue Letter. We're so blessed to have all these uh, oh. apps that are helpful now. It's, it's amazing. Bible Enjoy Hub it while you can. Translation too has every translation that you can think of in Bible Hub. Yeah. The Greek and the Hebrew are, are, I think, just by what I've studied a little bit, I'm no scholar, they are so colorful and there's so many depths of meanings that sometimes I think they can mean two things. And Absolutely. More than two. More than it's two. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and every now and then I'll get tugged in my spirit. Look up the word of that city. And I guarantee it represents something. And I found that with the Jonathan story. Yeah. The place he lived was called like desolate or something like that. Without God's grace is yeah. what the place is. And when he moved to David's home and ate at the table of the king, you know, he was in God's grace. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's a... Uh, it's really interesting, but I want to say I am a King James preferred, uh, okay. that, but that that's only because I believe they, they stayed pretty close to the context of things. They didn't try to explain it to people. They translated 
interpreted instead of interpret it. Because yeah. when they interpret, they start putting their doctrine in. That's and but right. but the King James has some things that I know are 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 there, like they minimize women's involvements and positions. Uh, and they uh they instead of like calling Phoebe a deacon, which is what it is, is the same word for deacon used in Greek as it is for the men, they translate it minister. Uh, yeah. And then they minimize her place, but yeah. they use the word for Janus, or it was a Janus or Jania, which is a woman, but they thought it was a man, so they left it in the earlier 1611 wow. version. Wow. So I know there are places where man's doctrine yeah. has determined what word they've used. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's always going to happen, but that's that's the beauty of, ha of having like the use of these into the near. So right way deep and find out the truth you know where i believe that the greek the original transcripts in greek and hebrew are the perfect and errant oh they're but, beautiful Amazing. right and, but the, any translation from those may have they're they're good they're god's preserved word but Amen. there's you got to dig deeper to get to the true root of things i think right i couldn't agree that's more. With any version and i have changed my mind on that since studying it yeah mm -hmm. yeah all right, I guess everybody has given a summary for the study tonight, so except me, so I'll take a minute. Uh, yep. The, uh, this chapter so far has been very enjoyable to me. Uh, it, it's so many of the chapters before, it's been like a little bit more drama uh, because I'm trying, I'm fighting so hard to try to make a point that, that I think is critical. And, and this one is, it's all very clear cut, simple. There's no misunderstanding or or arguments about the meanings and, and stuff. But uh, uh, so it was just nothing but joy uh, studying this tonight. Uh, so let me use the balance of the time here just to announce a couple of things. I'm going to keep announcing this every Wednesday and every Sunday. Uh, contact me, put your name on a list. Uh, if you want to come to Las Vegas for a meetup sometime this year for everybody in our congregation, I want to get people not only from all over the United States, but but uh, all over South America, Canada, Europe, Australia. We've got people in the congregation from all over. If you uh, are interested in coming to Las Vegas and get let us all get together under one roof one time, uh, give me your name and, and I'll start building up a list and then we'll decide on a date. Um, the other thing is, um, um, I would enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I've got you Come on the again, list. Man. I've drafted you, put you on the list. Yeah, dude, I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing is, um, many of you know that, uh, I have a playlist titled interviews. The most recent interview I've done is, uh, brother Michael. Uh, that was a fantastic, uh, interview that, uh, I had a wonderful response to it from yep. everybody. Yep. Uh, but um, I have almost 20 members of the congregation that I've interviewed, but there's many more here that I would love to interview. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to ask everybody to do is go to that playlist, listen to some of the interviews so you can see what's what it's like. The purpose of the interview is so that we can get to know each other better. And see, a lot of churches, you might go to a church for 10 years or 20 years, and you don't really know anybody there. You don't have any conversations, and there's no real, without that, you don't have fellowship. But by doing these interviews, we get to know each other much, much deeper and, and uh, understand each other better. So contact me if you uh, would uh, like to participate, and I'll be happy to interview you. Uh, the other thing is I want you to send me your best one-liners when i say by one-liners i want to promote all these things uh, license to rest the gospel is about the gift and the guarantee uh for, works never work for salvation grace means no works you can clean a fish be, uh, you can't clean a fish before you catch it the gospel <laughs> is belief, not behave let us say christian and Christianity rather than Christian. So and then I've got quite a few more on the list already. So these examples of sayings or one-liners that I think that are profound, and it's a, a, it's a clever way of expressing a point. So I'm compiling a list, and then we're going to do a, a big uh, study on all those sayings. And I'd like to promote these things so that they can become commonplace. 
Uh, so send me your, your best one-liners. Um, and then uh, let me see. I guess that's it. Uh, join, don't forget to join us on Sunday. Uh, I'm sending Brother Michael the, the link to join us on Sundays, and he I think he'll be joining us when his schedule permits. He only has Sunday and Monday off from his work, so he, he may be too busy sometimes, but hopefully he'll be able to join us on our some of, some of our Sunday programs. Mm. Um, okay, uh, if there's if there's nothing else, then uh, I want to thank everybody in the chat room. Chat room. Uh, we we have such a wonderful chat rooms, uh, and, it, and it has really matured over the last year and a half. It sure has. Uh, the, the way it, it is, it's just we don't have trolls bothering us for the most part. If we do, we we nip that in the bud. Mm -hmm. uh, people doing a better job, staying focused on the subject that's being discussed instead of all kinds of other side com you know, conversations. And, uh, and and even when people disagree, they're doing it with respect and courtesy and love and, and you know, uh, being rude. So uh, everything is just wonderful. I couldn't be happier with our congregation. So right. thank you for participating to uh, 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 Michael, Cripps, and, and Renee, and everybody in the chat room. Finally, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.